Hello and welcome to Modern Broadcasts. In today's episode, we are taking a look at our ROG Ally once again. So the ROG Ally, as we did that unboxing video, if you haven't seen that, I strongly recommend you check it out right here. But when we did that video initially, we know that this is a Windows machine. It's a absolute powerhouse. I've been able to play Final Fantasy, A Realm Reborn, the base game, and completely beat it on this handheld. I, re I really enjoy this. I think it has a good package. The software is a little buggy here and there, and with it being a Windows machine, it's not the best. So we are going to fix that today by installing a different OS operating system. So the custom software that we're going to be installing on our Ally today is Bazit, B-A-Z-Z-I-T-E, and I'll have a link in the description of everything we talk about today. So a couple things that we're going to need. Let's go ahead and gather those items, and we should be good to go. So of course, the first thing that we're going to need is our ROG Ally. It's also strongly recommended that you have a keyboard. So here I have a wireless 2.4 gigahertz or Bluetooth keyboard by Royal Kludge. This is not a sponsored video, but I do really like the aesthetics of this keyboard and use this quite often. It's also ROG backlit. Well done. We will also need a USB flash drive with at least 10 gigabytes of free storage as the operating system is about 12 gigs in total, I think. So we're going to need that. And it's also strongly recommended that you have some sort of a dock that plugs in to the ROG Ally, so that way you have those USB ports available. Here I already have the 2.4 gigahertz keyboard adapter in there, and then we have a spot for our USB. That should be everything that we need in order to flash the firmware and get the new operating system up and running. So let's go ahead and head over to the computer side of things and get that operating system. All right, here we are on the computer side of things. And uh, first thing that we're going to do is go to BadGG. Again, I'll have links down in the description of everything we talk about. But when you get here, we're greeted at this website here. Up in the right hand corner, it says download. Go ahead and click on that. It's going to scroll all the way down and it's going to ask, what hardware are you using? We're going to go ahead and click on that. And as we see, this supports a lot of different handhelds or PCs, laptops, and other virtual machines. So we're going to go ahead and click on this ROG Ally. And desktop environment, do you prefer? I'm going to go ahead and just go with like the Steam OS with KDE. I believe the other one is like a Debian kind of. Down here, we're going to go ahead and click the download Bazit deck file, and that will start to download. So it is quite a large file. I believe it is around eight gigs, I believe. For those that want to follow a written guide, right here is the Bazit initial setup guide. If you click this link, it's going to go over everything in a written format, and you can just click on do, 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 installing Bazit on handheld PCs. There we have the ROG Ally right there. Pre-installation. So again, that USB flash drive will need at least 10 gigabytes free. It's all going to get wiped. A software to flash the image. They are recommending Fedora, Ventoy, or Rufus. Make sure to properly eject the drive after flashing the ISO to it. Optional is a physical keyboard. Again, we're going to use one. It just makes it easier and a little bit faster when installing. While our download is continuing, we're going to go ahead and download Rufus. I'm going to scroll down here and download Rufus 4.5, which we see that is done right up here. So we're going to go ahead and click on that. Yes, that's fine. Okay. And we'll need this once our ISO is done. Right now we're at eight gigs. So it's just about there. Perfect. So 8.7 gigs. I'm gonna go down to Rufus here. I'm going to plug in our USB thumb drive. Rufus immediately found that. We're gonna click on select. There's our deck image. Ready and start. Gonna say okay. And to continue this operation, you click okay. All right. Make sure that before you do this, you are selected on the correct drive. All right, now that that is done, Let's go ahead and head back over to our handheld. All right, back here with our device. Now that we have the software on this USB flash stick, we're going to go ahead and get set up to flash it. Let's plug this in up top. So go ahead and turn on our keyboard and power up our device. We're going to hit F2. There we are. We're going to go ahead and get into the BIOS menu. And I'm going to zoom in on this just so it's easier to see. There we are. So we see here that uh, we wanted to check out the boot menu. So we're going to go ahead and click on that. And we're going to push down. There we are. So now we are booted onto our flash stick here. 
We're going to go ahead and go up to install. Say OK. It's going to start the installation process. This should only take a few minutes before we get a white screen. So we'll let this just kind of run. All right. Once that boots up here, we're going to go ahead and choose our language, which is English. Say continue. The next thing that we want to do is installation destination. Click on that. We want it to be on the main drive. So we're going to go ahead and click done. And it's going to tell us that we do not have enough space. Let's see if we can get that zoomed in just a little bit further. There we go. So it's going to say that we don't have a enough space. So we're going to go ahead and click on reclaim. Delete that and say reclaim. Now we're going to go ahead and you want a keyboard for this section when clicking on account. So if you don't have a keyboard connected, don't click on it. Otherwise, it will delete the username and the password. So we're going to go ahead on broadcast, let's say modern, and we're going to type out our password. And it's a weak password. That's all right. Let's say you have to hit done twice because it doesn't like it being weak. Do so like that and begin installation. Why do I get this error? So after troubleshooting for a long time, we're going to download Gparted, which is a bootable kind of visual disk imager manager. That way we can delete our hard drive and delete all the partitions and whatnot, and then start from scratch as if there's no operating system on our, on our ally. So let's go ahead and get this into a bootable drive and try again. Okay, so we just plugged in our Gparted, and what we're going to do is go to boot menu, have it boot that up. So we can completely format our hard drive inside. All right, now with everything deleted off the hard drive, hopefully not everyone has to go through that. Once we get everything off, there shouldn't be anything in the way and uh, it should be good to go now. English installation. Yep. No warning this time. So that's a good sign and begin. There we have it. It is now installing. Now this process does take some time. So we'll just leave this here while this finishes up. Okay, so that took longer than I thought, and my camera died. So I swapped out the battery and just decided to let it finish before we started recording again. So in total, that took about 10, 12, 15 ish minutes. So, but here we are. Once it is completed, we're going to go ahead and hit the reboot system. I think I missed. I'm going to try that again. There we go. It's going to go completely out of focus. And then we have a reloading screen. So there it goes. There's the reboot, and here we have some instructions. So we're going to go ahead and continue with the boot. Back this out again. There we have the ROG logo with Bazit down at the bottom. And this process is also going to take a little bit of time just going through the first setup, unpacking. It's already done. Look at that. That was fast, actually. We're going to lose focus on the, on the device. It's going to reboot. And there we have it. Welcome to Bazit Handheld Edition. So we're going to go ahead and hit Next. We do want MU deck on here. I'm going to go ahead, check mark that. It's going to try to get us signed into Steam here. We'll hold off on that in a sec for a second. Get this other stuff going here. I think that's pretty much it. I just wanted to add the MU deck. I'm going to go ahead and hit install. There we go. Now that we got the Wi Fi connected, so go next and done. Okay, so I'm actually going to go ahead and return to gaming mode real quick before we sign into Steam. Do that. There we go. Now we're going to go ahead and go through the Steam setup process, Mountain Standard Time. We have the Wi-Fi already, and now it is installing Steam. So this process does say it's going to take about 20 minutes in total to completely download, install, and get going here. So I think we'll return once this gets all installed and continue then. Okay, signing into Steam now, and there we have it. I mean, it's pretty much already kind of set up exactly like a Steam Deck. It just has a little bit more power than a Steam Deck does. And so here we have it. We basically converted our Ally into a Steam Deck. Now, in my opinions, I think it's worth it for the Ally. Yes, we lose the Windows side of things, so the Windows compatible games. But the Steam Deck's OS is nearly flawless, in my opinion. And I think the games are going to run better. It's going to have more performance. You're going to be able to get MU deck on here and get your ROMs and emulations going and be able to play more than what the Steam Deck can do. And I think overall, it's just going to improve the quality of this product. The same with the Ally X, having Bazit run on, on that system as well is almost a no brainer. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below if it's worth running Linux on this instead of Windows. 
I'd be very curious to see how divided the community is on that. I'm going to go ahead and get some stuff installed. It is late. It's after midnight. And uh, I am going to probably call it here. I'm going to have some stuff install overnight. And we'll probably pick up recording in the morning. And do some editing tomorrow for this to release on Sunday. So I'm going to go ahead and get some stuff installed. We'll check it out. I foresee it's going to run exactly like the Steam Deck. Maybe some better frames. But otherwise, pretty seamless and good to go. I will see all of you tomorrow morning. Good morning. So we have four games installed here, three of which are great on deck and then the other one is unknown. So I figured we'd go ahead and give it a shot. Huh, look at that, it's all birthday themed. I missed. So as we see there, I mean, it runs flawlessly. Anything that the Steam Deck can do, this is going to be able to do. The software is absolutely seamless and just does a good job. This game, it doesn't know if it's going to run or not. I don't see why it wouldn't, so... I'm gonna go ahead and give it a shot. This game was originally on the GameCube and one of my favorites growing up. I picked it up by accident. There was really nothing at where I was located. It was called EB Games before GameStop and uh, they didn't have really anything there that I was interested in. And I saw this and it looked interesting so I decided to give it a shot. The game that I really wish that they would remaster or re-release is the Custom Robo series. I'm happy to see that we're getting games like this redone and re-released but Custom Robo was I think by far one of my all-time favorite GameCube games that came out and just didn't get the recognition that it deserves. I forgot that this game has a lot of exposition. Oh, there's a skip button. Scoop. I mean, this is working just fine. When doing these tests, I always like to end it with Spider-Man, just as that game is a bit more demanding on the systems, and it's just fun to swing around. So here we have Spider-Man. Let's go ahead and get into it. I figure we'll just swing around the city. That's when you really get to see kind of the stuttering or where the system is kind of lagging behind. So. Oh, well, what's she gonna do? Shoot me? Honestly, 50 50 chance. Oh, fine. I don't know if the camera's able to pick it up. Um, I'm looking at my monitor while I am recording here. Um, and it looks like there might be some ghosting on the camera, but in person, there there is none. I mean, this is a seamless, gorgeous looking display. There's no stuttering whatsoever, or screen tearing, or a ghosting effect. This is very clean. Nice. But there we have it. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please consider leaving a like and subscribe. What are your thoughts on the different OS for the Ally? Should you stick with the Windows machine or should you jump over to the Steam OS? Let me know in the comment section down below. I am curious to hear your thoughts. Also, be sure to check out moderbroadcast.tv, where we have some new merch. We have some handhelds on there. We have a couple games on there left. A couple got purchased already, but uh, yeah. Have a great week, everyone, and take care.